Is Jesus the Son of God and God the Son? Part 3 Did Jesus fulfil all the prerogatives of a truly holy God? In order to validate his statements and work, Jesus had to fulfil all the attributes specific to kingdom divinity. In fact, what does it mean to be God? For someone to have a godlike identity and be recognised as God, that person must have a few essential attributes. Eternity That person has to be without beginning and without end. Jesus in the Old Testament prophecies said that he is the father of eternity. Isaiah 9.6 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Micah 5.2 but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, through you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. In the New Testament it is written, Colossians 1.17, And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. John 1, 1, 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. The epistle of John records the prayer of Jesus at the end of his mission on earth, asking for the glory he had in the spiritual realm before coming to earth. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, Glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Worship That person will receive the worship. Worship is short for worship. That means giving someone their proper worth. Worship means the highest level of honour. Homage, reverence, respect, gratitude, praise and glory to someone who is in a clearly superior position and to whom you show your obedience and consideration. God is worthy of our worship because he created all things, because all things have their being in him. The angels were messengers and received no worship. The apostles also refrained from receiving worship. They all refused to believe that it was reserved only for the one true God. There are, however, two who have accepted true worship. The first person is Jesus and the second is the devil. The devil always wanted to be God, seeking and desiring worship as the most important thing to him. He also asked Jesus to bow down and worship him. Matthew 4, 8, 10 Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. But Jesus received and accepted glorification. He approved it based on his divine attributes. The devil endorsed him as an usurper. 
The Bible describes several episodes in the scripture where Jesus received worship from various people. He also received worship from demons. Matthew 28, 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Romans 14, 11. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Revelations 4, 10 to 11. 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Revelations 5:13 And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying blessings and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever The worship of Christians or better still disciples is the essence of Jesus acknowledgement of their salvation Omnipotence. That person must to be omnipotent. The Bible presents Jesus as the one who has all power in heaven and on earth. He rules over demons, the world of angels, over nature. He controls all circumstances. It is enough to say in one word, all are subject to him. He was present in the act of creation of all that exists. Through him, all things have been made and all things are created through him. He performs divine works, which only God can do. Colossians 1.16 For by him all things were created, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. John 1.3 All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Omniscience That person must have the ability to know everything. Jesus is presented as knowing even the thoughts of man. Luke 6, 8, but he knew their thoughts. John 16, 30, now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this, we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus sees at great distances in an explicably rational way. John 1, 48 to 49, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Omnipresence. That person must be unchanging. He is able to be in several places or everywhere at the same time. The omnipresence of Jesus is confirmed in the Gospel of John. John 3.13 No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. In other words, while Jesus was talking to Nicodemus here on earth, at the same time, he is in heaven. He does not say that he was or he will be in heaven. 
Even in his incarnate state on earth, he expresses his divinity present everywhere, coexisting in two parallel worlds. immutable that person must be unchanging any change can take place for better or for worse Jesus cannot be better than he is and no less good he is perfect the book of James speaks about God James 1:17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation, shadow of turning. The book of Hebrews speaks about Jesus. Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that person has to have life in himself to be able to bring back to life, respectively to master the problem of death and the resurrection from the dead. John 5:21. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. John 5, 25. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. John 10, 17, 18. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again, one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. John 10, 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That person has the right to be the absolute judge everywhere and to everyone. Jesus Christ will be the court at the last judgment. Jesus will judge all who lived on earth from the creation of the world to its end. No one will escape his judgment. Even the dead will be judged for their actions when they were alive. John 5, 22, 23 For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all shall honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son, does not honour the Father who sent him. John 5, 27 And has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Acts 10:42. And he commanded us to preach to all the people and to testify that it is he who has obtained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. That person has the right to forgive sinners for violating the divine kingdom law. Jesus, as the one true God, forgives the sins of men. Acts 10.43 To him, all the prophets witness that, through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Mark 2.5-7 and 10-11 When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts. 
Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. The Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit have all these and more essential attributes and form the Godhead. Three persons coexist with all the divine attributes in the one person of God. Another important thing, Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, Matthew 28, 18 to 19, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus fulfill all prerogatives of a truly holy God? Jesus possessed all of them. In conclusion, we mention a verse representative of our subject, Philippians 2, 6, 11. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. For a person to believe the evidence is out there amongst all the lies and deception around us. For the person who does not want to believe, there is no proof for them and no argument. Isn't it interesting today people state religion is dying out, yet in reality it's stronger than ever. Common logic would dictate if there are 7.7 .7 billion people in the world and nearly 5 billion of them are made up of Christians and Muslims while others are Hindu, Sikh and different faiths, God worship, whether it be the one true God or not, is alive and well. It may be important in this contents the recommendation of the book Evidence That Demands a Verdict by Josh McDowell it, along with many other books or other sources of documentation, has a detailed presentation and logical simulation of rich material and also presents a multitude of evidence including historical arguments in support of the Christian faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and a communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.